This lecture will cover the first reading on financial reporting and analysis which is financial statement analysis and introduction. Just as a, as a basic comment, FRA, we often refer to financial reporting and analysis as FRA. This is 20% of the overall exam and so clearly this topic needs to be taken very seriously. Let's talk about the distinction between reporting and analysis. In financial reporting, so this is the work that is done by accountants. Financial reporting basically provides information about the performance and financial position of a company. So you will have chartered accountants create a balance sheet, income statement, cash flow statement, etc for a given company and that provides information about how the company has performed. So you can think of this information as describing what has happened to the company in the past. Financial statement analysis and those who are preparing for the CFA exam, they basically are preparing to become analysts. So as an analyst, you do not create financial reports, but you have to understand, study and analyze financial reports. And this process is called financial statement analysis, where you basically study this financial in information in order to do the analysis of a company. Specifically, what are the different types of analysis that you might do? One is investment analysis. So you are determining whether or not to buy shares of Hupco or say Walmart. And one of the steps that you will do is study the financial statements and based on the financial statements and several other pieces of information, you will, you will try to figure out whether this investment should be made or should not be made. A related point is mergers. So if you are big company A and you are evaluating whether to merge with or acquire company B, among many other things, you will have to analyze the financial statements of the company that you are evaluating. Subsidiaries, here again, if you are big company A and you have a subsidiary S, so to evaluate the performance of the subsidiary, among other things, you will study and analyze the financial statements of the subsidiary. Credit worthiness, here say you are a bank and you are evaluating whether or not to make a loan to a small textile company. So we will study this in a lot more detail later, but to determine whether or not you should make this loan, here again you will look at the financial statements of the company to try and evaluate whether this company, whether this loan should be made. In essence, does the company have a strong financial position? Will they be able to repay the loan and so on? By the way, this is just a representative, risk, uh, representative list. There are several other functions of the, of, there are several other functions of financial statement analysis. What are the major financial reports? We will just touch on these here, but see these in a lot more detail later on in this topic. Income statement is basically going to tell you how a company has performed over a given period. So you might have an income statement for a company for 2010. So in that income statement, you will first see the top line is how much revenue the company made during the year and then you will see a whole bunch of expenses and then taxes and at the end there will be a profit so profit is basically the revenue for the year minus the expenses for the year balance sheet tells you the picture of a company on a given day so typically on the last day of the financial year, let's say 31st December 2010, 
you will have a balance sheet for this day which tells you what the assets of the company are and we'll talk about the concept of assets and liabilities in a little bit of detail later but tells you what the assets are and what the liabilities are and what the overall equity or owner's equity is and notice that the assets of a company must be equal to the liabilities plus equity then we have a cash flow statement which basically tells us how uh, tells us what's been happening with cash what money is coming in what money is going on and so on and the cash flow statement is divided into three parts operating cash flows these are cash flows related to the operations of the company investing cash flow this is cash flow related to investing activity where you might be buying machines selling machines and so on and financing uh, financing activity so for example if you issue new debt that is financing activity if you issue new shares or buy back shares all that is financing activity and finally statement of changes in owners equity so this would be a statement at the end of a financial period that shows how owners equity has changed over time we will discuss each one of these in a lot more detail uh, later on in this topic some other documents financial statement notes or footnotes so from a analysis perspective these are extremely important where let's say that you are looking at the balance sheet of a company and on the left hand side you will have various assets so within assets you might have something that is called property plant and equipment and for that you might see a number like 10 million for property plant and equipment now associated with this information is a lot of detail what exactly is the Uh, what exactly is this equipment how long it's been around for what depreciation is being used and that is what is explained in a footnote so to really understand the situation of a company it's important to carefully study the footnotes any assumptions details etc are also specified in the footnotes supplementary schedules these are so these provide additional information such as regional sales and so on so if you are a large pharma company then from a reporting requirement perspective you might simply have to report your overall revenue but you might choose to provide additional information such as which country uh, such as your sales by region as an example MD&A stands for management discussion and analysis so this as the name implies is essentially management's opinion their discussion and analysis explaining the financial numbers so the financial statements that we talked about earlier the balance sheet the income statement and the cash flow statement these are supposed to be objective and purely based on facts the management discussion and analysis interprets or gives the management's interpretation and analysis of the financial statement data so clearly this can be quite subjective other sources of information quarterly or semi annual reports so companies typically provide reports uh, annual reports obviously every year after every fiscal year but every 3 months and 6 months typically companies produce interim financial reports so quarterly reports would be an example of interim financial reports and these are not audited the final reports the annual reports are audited but the interim reports are not audited and uh, i am going to talk about what audited means in a very short while proxy statements are also an important source of information so in a proxy statement if a company is putting up some matter for a vote so for example there is a election 
for a uh, seat so f you need to elect a new member uh, in the board of directors there is an election for that that information will be in a proxy statement sometimes information such as management and director compensation would be in proxy statements of stock performance potential conflicts of interest so this sort of detail can be often found in proxy statements audit and internal control so an audit is an examination by an independent accounting firm so let's say that a company has put together its cash flow statement income statement and balance sheet once a company creates this information for for at least the annual uh, reports the information or the company produced statements need to be examined by an independent accounting firm such as so you have uh, examples of accounting firms would be pwc ernst and young etc so these are accounting firms that verify that the information put together by the company is correct so this process is called an audit now once a auditor goes through the financial statement they will issue a report and if you pick up any annual report that will include an auditor's report so ideally what you want to be looking at as an analyst is a auditor's report where the auditor provides a unqualified opinion so a uh, unqualified opinion is one where the auditor provides reasonable assurance that financial statements are fairly presented notice the term reasonable assurance this is because the auditor cannot possibly provide 100% assurance they can't look at every single detail so given the audit process even if it is quite thorough it, in fact it is supposed to be thorough but at the end of the auditing process the best case scenario is that the auditor provides reasonable assurance that the financial statements are fairly presented a qualified opinion is where there are some limitations or exceptions to the accounting standards so here essentially the auditor is saying that in general the financial statements are fine but there are some issues some exceptions and those would typically be pointed out in the audit report so this is somewhere in the middle and finally where we don't want to be is an adverse opinion where the auditor is basically saying that the financial statements do not appropriately reflect the company reality before companies put up their financial reports for uh, external audit obviously they need to be processes and procedures in place to ensure that these financial reports are created in a professional manner and that the the process of creating them is sound so that process is basically called the internal controls process and this helps ensure that the company's process of generating reports is sound so companies need to ensure a strong internal controls process for them to be able to get a unqualified opinion from their auditor actually one important point in case you have not seen a audit report before i would strongly encourage you to see exhibit 6 from the curriculum which is on page 20 in the two uh, in the 2011 curriculum and uh, this is basically a uh, audit produced by Ernst and Young for Walmart so you can see a uh, audit report here or you can pick up any annual report and see a annual report and uh, and see an audit there now finally the financial statement analysis framework this is extremely important basically uh, what the financial statement analysis framework it it is basically a framework for analyzing financial statements and it consists of a six step or six stage process where first of all you define the objective and the context just to give you an idea here you might be evaluating a company and determining whether it's a good equity investment 
or you might be evaluating whether or not to make a loan to the company so depending on your objective and context the type of analysis and the type of data that you will gather would be different so obviously step one in your analysis framework is to define the objective and the context you then based on your objective and context you gather the appropriate data you then process the data as you will see later on in this topic uh, let's say that you are evaluating uh, you are you are evaluating auto companies around the world and you want to figure out which one company to invest in so you might be looking at annual reports and financial data for ford as well as toyota now if ford uses one accounting standard which is the us gap and toyota creates its reports based on another accounting standard then what among other things what you will have to do is process the data so you will have to make adjustments to data so you can make a apples to apples comparison of the financial statements of the two companies and that is called processing the data once you process the data then you analyze and interpret the data you issue your report conclusions or recommendations and then finally you update your analysis as financial reports change so if you did this analysis in 2009 then obviously uh, new information comes out after that and you need to keep updating as long as as long as you are still following those companies i would strongly encourage you to see and actually study in great detail exhibit 8 which talks about this financial statement framework in a lot of detail so this is on page 25 in the 2011 curriculum i have seen uh, several questions on this in the past so you need to take it very seriously